All right, this is what it is, man. This was about the code of honor, the code of conduct, and how you conduct yourself on the street. If you're not with these codes, don't go to the street. And that's why I'm telling this to the youth so y'all understand what time it is and where we coming from. I. This is what it is. Unique Mecca Audio, man. I'm going to give you this one on the code of conduct on the street so y'all understand. That's why this is for the youngins. If you're not going to follow these codes, don't go on the street. No excuse that you didn't know the codes. No excuse you didn't know the rules. These are the rules. You understand what I'm saying? Cheers. 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 The crime. Cheers. The crime. Now, this. Not promoting the crime. Not promoting none of them. Just letting you know what time it is. All right? Now, check. I had a few people call me on my uh on my uh number on the screen. The number on the screen, I do answer my number on the screen. You understand? Everybody that reached out to me in the comments, you know what I mean? Um put and let it be known that you spoke to me on the phone. I answer my calls. Now, I had a call from, you know, a little homie. Now, he's telling me about a scenario that happened. And he's asking me if this is ratting, if this is telling, if this is snitching. Now, he riding down the street. You understand what I'm saying? Now, he riding down the street and uh, he see a homie over on, you know, on the side of the road. So the homie said, yo, take me over here. The dude riding down the street, so y'all understand, is driving. He driving a brand new Land Rover. He getting money. And everybody know he getting money. You understand what I'm saying? So now... They know that he, 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 you know, he, he's selling drugs. He's doing what he do. You know, he carry pistols and he all in on the street. Now, dude asks him for a ride. Now, dude gets in the car, you know, and while they riding, they get pulled over by the police. Now, they get pulled over by the police, and when they get pulled over, dude says, yo, um, yo, what's up, what's up? You know what I mean? And he's like, nah, my paperwork's straight. So now the police looks at it, he pulls them over, he arrests them, and they got a gun in the car. You understand? So now he got a gun in the car, they get arrested, they go down to the police station, you know what I mean? And then they take them over to, you know, uh, Raggers Island, you know, downtown to MD, uh, MCC Brooklyn. So they get down there to um, MCC, and dude is saying, yo, you gonna claim the gun? And dude tells him straight up, he said, dude, you know I always carry a gun. You got it in my car, you know what I mean? Now, if something would have happened and somebody would have tried to rob us and I pulled the gun out and defended us and saved your life, and you understand what I'm saying? And my life, you know, then I would have did the right thing, right? He said, yeah. He said, yeah, but, you know, you know it wasn't my gun. Yeah, I know it wasn't your gun, but you know I always carry a gun. You never asked me when I came in, did I have a gun? A lot of people are not going to like this right now. You know, but this is the hardcore truth to how this situation play out. And that's why I tell the youth, don't get involved. Stay in your lane and stay amongst your own peers that have your same interests and freedom at heart or hustle at heart. You know the dude is a hustler. You get in the car with him. Now you get caught with the gun and you want him to say that it was his gun. A lot of y'all say, hell yeah, he should claim the gun. You know what I mean? But bottom line is, dude never claimed the gun. You understand what I'm saying? And dude mad that they went down, you know, and went to trial for it. So when they go to trial for it, dude says, man, you know, I can't do this time for this gun, man. He said, my nigga, you knew I was dirty when you got in the car. You never even asked me if I was dirty when I got in the car. You understand what I'm saying? So he said, yeah, but you know it's not my gun. He said, yeah, but you know I keep a gun with me, so why would you get in my car? Y'all understand the moral of this? Don't get in a nigga car if you know a nigga is hustling, you know, breaking the law or doing anything wrong. Don't say you're a civilian, you got nothing to do with it, and he's supposed to claim the gun. No, you had a choice to get in the car. You had a choice to deal with this man. You chose to deal with this man that you know is a hot stepper. So therefore, on the strength of that, 
you know, you shouldn't have gotten the call. Right or wrong? All right, so y'all pissed at that. You know what I mean? But I'm giving y'all a shock rave of what's happening. You know what I mean? Now, let me give it to you like this. Now, in that scenario, you know what I mean? If he a man, he's supposed to claim it. That's what y'all are saying. You understand? And I understand that, you know? But now, you know, let's say dude tells him straight up, look, man, I'm going to claim this one, man. But you already know you ain't supposed to get no call with nobody. You know what I mean? Because that's how I would have handled it. You know what I mean? That situation, I would have just claimed it because dude shouldn't have came in it. But that's me. But the code of the street is, you know, if you get in the car with somebody you know is dirty, you're responsible for whatever is in the car. You understand? But now, this is the way that should have played out. So y'all pay attention and pay attention good. The way it should have played out is when dude, the pedestrian, you know, saw a dude driving down the street in a Land Rover, you know what I mean? And asked for a ride before he got in the car, he should have said, yo, homie, you dirty. You know what I mean? And then homie would tell him yes or no. If homie tells him, no, he's not dirty, then they get pulled over with the car, you know what I mean, by the police, then by all means, he must claim that gun because he concealed the fact that he had the gun, so that means that he's claiming responsibility for the gun because he never told his man the gun was in the car. But now, let's say he tells his man straight up, you know what I mean? Yo, family, you dirty? He asked him before he get in the car. And he said, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm dirty, you know? Um, okay, but I need a ride. Okay, all right. So, you know, come on, get in. Now, he done told him he's dirty. You understand? And dude choose to get in the car. He had a choice. He had a choice to get in the car or not get in the car. And his choice was to get in the car. Now he was dead got doggone wrong. I Now, that's that scenario. So you understand. This is another one that, you know, went down. So that's why I let y'all know before you get in the car or get around any one of your comrades that you know is doing wrong, you ask them. Oh, you dirty. Period. If he tell you, yeah, he dirty, now you have a choice. Whatever happens after that, that's on you, you know? Like, let me give you one of my scenarios, you know what I mean? Like I said, me, you know, I would have just claimed it, you understand? But the rules of the street is, nigga, you knew I was dirty when I got there, you understand? That's like, ah, right, let me flip it, because you know I like to ride, you know I like to ride, you know what I mean? Gunshots for the ride, gunshots for the ride, you know? Let me flip this, you know what I mean? Dude meets a girl, you know, and he talking to the girl, and the girl says, you know, you got a woman? And he said, yeah, I got a woman. You know what I mean? But we could, you know, hang out. We could do what we do. You know what I mean? Now, it's her choice if she want to deal with this man because he was honest enough to say, baby, I got a woman, but I'm just trying to screw you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just trying to go up in your guts. You know what I mean? I, I just want to water your garden. You know what I mean? Now, if he tell a woman that, you understand? And then he start dealing with the woman. And he started digging the guts out real good like he unique. I mean, he punishing her. I mean, he's digging deep up in her. I mean, you, you know what I mean? She's squirting in the whole nine, you know? And he done touched her soul. And here it is, two months later, she feel like she's in love. And then now, she want to check his phone. She want to, you know what I mean? She want to ask him, where was you at? Who was you with? And she want to do all this crap, you know? And then get mad. What do we want to go with this girl? Yo, I gotta take my um, I gotta take my girl out tonight, so I ain't gonna be able to see you tonight. I'ma see you tomorrow. Oh, why well, you gotta spend so much time with her? <clears throat> this is how she carry, you know. This how you know. What I mean, come on. You understand? So now, when she does that, he turns around and he says, "Hold up, hold up, hold up." When I met you, I told you I had a girl. That means that that's my priority. You had a choice to deal with me or not. You know what I mean? But then here she go now. But I love you, dog. Now, she love him. And she expect things to change when he put it on the table when he met her. So you get what you paid for. You don't get involved in things like that and then sit here and turn around and play games and start talking about, but I love him, dog. I love I love you, dog. You know what I mean? Yo, come on, girl. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You know, pay attention. Pay attention. 
All right, so now I'm gonna give you a scenario. I'm gonna give you one of my scenarios, because like I said, I'm riding gunshots for the ride. Now, I'm riding down the street, right? I'm riding down the street, and I got a, uh, you know, I got an ounce of heroin on me. Now, I got an ounce of heroin on me, and I got the homie with me. You understand? So now, we run into another homie that say, yo, come on, son. This one from Newark. We're going to shout Newark out. Big shout out to Newark. Uh, big shout out to Newark. Big shout out to Newark. We're going to shout out Newark. You know what I mean? Because it's a true story. You know what I mean? So I, I, I run into one of the homies from uh, uh, Newark. You know, we in Harlem. And he said, man, the Zanzibar jumping tonight, man. They got all kinds of girls out there. Let's go out to the Zanzibar. You know? So I'm like, I um, bet. But I got to go put this ounce down. You know what I mean? My man in the passenger seat with me. And he says, nah, homie, you know what I mean? Um, let's just shoot out there. And then the dude from Jersey say, yeah, could the joint going to close? By the time you go to the Bronx and come back, we're going to get there late. We're just going to catch the people coming out. And I know you want to go in and have your pick of the women, you know? So I'm like, nah, I'm going to go put this joint down, man. I don't want to drive over there, over the turnpike, going over there like that. You know what I mean? All the way down to exit 15 to go to Jersey, you know, and, you know, with this ounce in it. And my man in the passenger seat says, man, come on, you get that shit to me, man. I hold it. You understand what I'm saying? And I give it to him. We riding down the street. True story. You know what I mean? We, I'm riding down the street. So while I'm riding down the street, we, we cross the bridge and, you know what I mean, we hit the turnpike and the music is bumping. I'm in a little M3. You know what I mean? My man in his M3 from Jersey. I ain't got to say no name. Y'all from back then, you know who I'm talking about. He out there and he'll tell you also. Everything I say, you can stamp it. You know what I mean? And y'all might not agree with none of this in 2023. You know what I mean? But this is how it plays out in the street, and this is how we did it back in the day. So now we riding down the street, and then the state troopers pull us over. State troopers pull us over. My man got the ounce in his pocket, you know? So they pull us over. They take us out the car. They search us, and then they find the ounce, you know? My man got it in his pocket, and my man telling him, it's his joint. He doing the right thing. He said, man, nah, that's mine's. And the police say, all right, and he puts the ounce on the hood of the car. True story, you know? So now he puts the ounce on the hood of the car, and then he go back to searching, and he don't find nothing, so he take all our IDs now. So they take our IDs, and he sees my name, and the red flag come up saying gangster. So they say, hold up. Gangster? You know we want you out here. You ain't had no business coming out here. You just did time out here. You know what I mean? And I'd be like, nah, I'm just going to a party, you know? So now they said, okay, but you had an ounce of, you know, heroin in the car. So dude says, nah, that was my ounce. And then the cop says, nah, I found it in the ashtray. When I pulled you over, I seen it in open view in the ashtray. And it's not yours, it's his because he's driving the car. And he's steady saying, man, it's mine. You understand what I'm saying? Now, they take us down to the little Port Authority in some little township off of uh, the turnpike. True story. And they lock us up. When they lock us up, they come back, they bring the charges, and they charge me for the ounce. They said it was in open view in my car, so it's my ounce, and they charging them because they was also in, because my man, because he was also in the car. You know what I mean? But I'm the one that got the charge. He just locked up for being in the car. You understand what I'm saying? So now, you know, we go down and they take us over to the Bergen County Annex, you know? So we in the annex, and it, 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 it was another homie with us. It was three of us, you know, that was in the back. He ain't had nothing to do with it. So when we get down there, now it's just between me and my man. The other homie didn't have nothing to do with it because he didn't even know we had the ounce. He just jumped in the car. So when we get down there, I tell the homie that was in the back, I said, look, you ain't got nothing to do with this, man. They, they charging me with it. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, if you want, we going and we going to just cut you loose. You know what I mean? And tell him that you ain't had nothing to do with it, period. But we ain't going to say it's ours, me and my man going to deal with it. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I'm not going to let him claim it because I feel we could beat it because they lying. It wasn't in no ashtray. And an ounce is not going to fit in an ashtray. You know what I mean? In no goddamn M3. So, you know, I feel we could beat this, you know? But we're going to let them know that you didn't have nothing to do with it. The homie said, nah, dog. You know what I mean? You, you ain't got to do that because that might mess your case up, you know? He said, we're going to ride it out. My man ain't had nothing to do with it. But my man said, we're going to ride it out. You know what I mean? And just to keep it official, you know, I'm even going to say this much. You know what I mean? I like to give props where it's due. This is my man from 49th Street. <laughs> Big shout out. 
Big shout out to 49th Street. Calm down, y'all. Calm down. Big shout out to 49th Street. This is my man from 49th Street, official brother. I even seen him since I've been home. He said, nah, dog. He said, nah, we're going to ride this out because, yeah, I feel we could beat it. He ain't nothing to do with it. But he's sitting in jail with his, you know what I mean, to fight this out that I told my man I wanted to put down. My man said, nah, he going to hold it. So he claiming it. We get pulled over. He claims it. The police say, nah, it's, it's you know, unique to gangster. So we want him out here anyway. So now we all get locked up. So I winds up bailing everybody out. So we all come get bailed out. And then when we go back to trial, you know what I mean? When the day we're supposed to go to trial, we get in the joint. And we know the police lied. So I'm explaining to my paid attorney, look, they saying it was in the car. Here's a picture of the ashtray. The car is outside. We show the judge the ashtray. We show him the ounce. We let him know there was no way in hell that was going to fit in the ashtray. So my lawyer go and tell the prosecutor, you know, exactly what I said, you know, the DA, and he shows him the paperwork. And he tells him straight up, look, there's no way this ounce is going to fit in the thing. You know, this is a weak case, da 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 You know what I mean? You're going to get the whole case thrown out, you know? So the prosecutor said, okay, so he got to take something. What's the deal, you know? So they come back to me and they ask me, okay, so what's the deal? You understand? Now, my man said, nah, I'm going to claim it, you know? So the lawyer said, nah, you don't have to claim it because we, we get ready to beat the ounce. And my man's still claiming it. That's how official this is. You understand? So now I said, nah, you know, tell them I take a, 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 a misdemeanor, you know what I mean, for anything where none of us do no jail time. Me, my man that's claiming the ounce, or my passenger. So he go back, talk to the DA, and he come back, and he's like, look, you know what I mean? I talk to him. What he going to do is he said he's going to switch it and he was going to charge you for failing to pull over because it was you was in another car racing up the highway. The other car got away from the police that was chasing him, but your dumb ass decided to pull over because you feel you got license registration and you good. You know what I mean? So we got you for failing to pull over, you know, when we put our lights on, you know? So I pled guilty to that, and the three of us walked out. But the whole time my man was willing to take it, I could have just said, nah, go ahead, let him take it, and let my man get five, ten years in the, in the state, you know? But I, nah, I fought that. I fought that so he could go, because those are the rules of the game. Let's get this straight. We don't play these little games. We in this together. So even though he claiming it, even though he, you know what I mean, told me, uh, uh, let's go, you know what I mean? If anything happened, I got it. You understand what I'm saying? Something happened, but then we still want to see how it's going to play out if we can get him out. You understand? So all three of us left, beat it, and went back to the city. Big shot! Hey, yo, you understand? So, you know, that's how that play out. Just so you understand. So now let me give you another scenario. Always remember, you know, before you get in anybody's car, before you deal with anybody that you know is not doing the right thing, you understand? That's not doing what you want to do. You know what I mean? He breaking the law, you not breaking the law, you went to school with him. You know what I mean? Before you get in his car, you know what I mean? You ask him if he's dirty. And if you're a civilian and you driving your brand new Land Rover that you done paid your little 70, 80,000 out for from your hard working job, you understand? And you see me walking down the street and I ask for a ride, you better ask me. Yo, you dirty? Key words. You dirty? And that's what he tell you. Now, if he tell you, yeah, I'm dirty, and you decide to put him in the car, and y'all get pulled over, don't sit there and say, yo, you, 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 know, you know that's your gun. Nigga, I told you I had the gun. And you chose to get in the car. So that means you down with whatever go to hell with this gun. Don't sit here and tell me to claim it. But I told you I was dirty. I'm going to fight it. I'm taking it to trial. Now y'all mad saying, oh man, he taking a trial, make his man go to trial. Yeah. Because those are the rules. He asked them, are you dirty? So all y'all out there with your, with, with your little homies that got ops and stuff like that that y'all went to school with and, you know, you, you, you run into him and you know he carrying that thing on him. Don't go getting mad when you get pulled over when he told you that he dirty and you even know that he's dirty. Like the first scenario I said at the beginning, put in the comments. I know none of y'all agree with this. I ain't going to say none of y'all. I know a lot of y'all don't agree with this because y'all not really from the street. But that's why I'm telling you don't get involved in the street because this is how this play out. 
You know, let me give you another scenario. I feel good. I feel good. Let me give you another scenario. You know what I mean? And, you know, this really ain't got nothing to do with that, but just to show you how petty dudes are. It's one of the homies, you know, big shout out to Ohio. Big shout out to Ohio. Big shout out to Ohio. This was, this was for Ohio. I'm going to tell you how it is. And y'all from Ohio, y'all remember this. Cause I tell true stories with scenarios, but I leave the names out because, you know, we don't do no telling over here. You need Mac audio, but we do do enlightenment. So we enlighten you on how the street go. Now, we got a homie that just did 28 years. You understand what I'm saying? He did 28 years in, 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 in the feds. Now, he come home and he go back on the block that he on and he driving a brand new, um, what's that, a, a, a triple black Cadillac Escalade. The new joint. Got the music bumping. He looking good. He wearing his mink coat. You know what I mean? And, you know, he getting money. You understand? So now, one of the new youngins, you know, that, you know, half his age, that been out there getting hit a little money. He says to dude. You know what I mean? Dude pulls up on him on the old timer. They just did 28. And he tells him, this from Ohio, true story. He pulls up on him. And y'all from Ohio, y'all know this story. You know? He pulls up on him and he tell him, yo, dog, you know, I don't know what you think you're doing. You know, you just coming home. You stepping on my toes. You know, you can't hustle over here. Next time I see you, you better have your joint with you. Now, what you going to do a dude tell you next time I see you, you going to have your joint with you? Now, put that in the comment. But let me say this, you know, back in the day, dude would tell you that you got your joint, you shoot him in his face. You know what I mean? Leave him right where he lay. Let his people, you know, deal with trying to figure out what, what teeth is his butt. Let his, family, let his family and loved ones figure out what, what you know, what, what, what teeth is what, what part of his, his brain matter goes with what part and how you put his skull back together because he jumped out there, you know? But the homie didn't have a joint on him because, you know, he ain't want to get caught with a gun, but he doing his thing, you know what I mean? And, you know, y'all awesome for the beepers now and all that. Do what you got to do. Now, dude tells him, next time I see you better have your gun, you know? So my man, old gangster, you ain't got to tell me twice. So... Figure this little nigga won't beef now. So he goes and he gets his banger. You know what I mean? So now he goes to the club. He hanging out in the club. He pays the bouncer to get in with the joint because he expecting to see this little dude because little dude done threatened his life, but he didn't have nothing to defend it at the time and little dude didn't pull no gun out on him. So, you know, he partied and he got the gun with him. He got a little girl with him and he's chilling. You know what I mean? So now he leaves the club. You follow me? And he got this girl with him in the car. The girl don't know what's going on with him and his gun and, you know, and, and, and him and this beef, this little girl, they getting ready to go dig her back out. You know what I mean? He getting ready to, you know, carve his name up in her guts. And you know what I mean? You know what it's like when you carve your name in a female guts? You know what I mean? If you a sucking nigga, then you start feeling like, you know, I love a dog. You know what I mean? But, you know what I mean? And if she, and if she a weak female, she feel like, but I love you, dog. All this love crap because your guts and your insides was carved out proper. That don't make it love. You know, I'm going to get back to where I'm at. But just remember, I like giving y'all different jewels and like to keep y'all moving. So pay attention so you keep up. I'm talking too fast. Rewind this. Slow it down. Do what you got to do. Uh, put the caption on the screen. Whatever it is. But then now, you know, here we go. So dude sits there and he does that. You understand? And dude comes and he riding down the street and the police pulls him over. The police pulls dude over and search the car. And said, I was told you got a gun in the car. You understand? He said, man, I ain't got no gun in the car. He said, well, could I search the car? He said, nah. He said, okay, well, I got an accurate description that you got a gun in the car and you threaten somebody and you're going to shoot them with the gun. So that's probable cause to search the car. So the police search the car and he finds the gun. Now he finds the gun, he lock him and the girl up. So now they go downtown. Now, in a scenario like that, he got to claim it. He just came out after 28. So now he's a felon in possession of a firearm. They just did 28 years. So you youngest pay attention. If I tell you, don't get involved in it because this joint get complicated and get deep and it get real. My man's so real that he claimed the gun. As he should, as you know. So now my man claims the gun. So he tells him straight up, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was my gun. And he said, yeah, but what, you stupid. Why would you carry a gun? And you got people calling the police on you. So my man is sitting there like, no. Nah. You know, he tell him straight up, you know, just let the girl go. I ain't got no rap for you. You know what I mean? And that's what it is. So now they said, we can't let her go until you see the prosecutor to make sure that once we let her go, you don't renege and say it wasn't your gun. 
You know what I mean? So he told the girl, look, I'm going to go on and bail you out. But they didn't give him a bail because he had fell in the possession of a gun. So they gave him a bail. He bails her out. He goes see his lawyer. True story. He goes see his lawyer. And his lawyer come back to him. And his lawyer said, you know, only way they're going to cut the girl loose because the car, the gun was found in the in the car in between the dashboard. You know what I mean? In between the um, armrest and the glove compartment. And it could be either one of yours, but they know it was your gun. But they want to lock your ass back up today, cause you know, you know, uh, you know, we, 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 they want to send you back to prison today. So, dude, it's like, you know, what I mean, all right. So, what they saying? He said, well, only way they're gonna cut the girl loose is you got to plead guilty to 15 years right now. <laughs> you know. So my man said, man, you know, as a gangster, you know, bring it. So he takes the 15 years. You know what I'm saying? So now the girl gets cut loose. He come back to the prison. And the first thing, and I'm going to tell you even what year this is to give you an idea. You know what I mean? This is back in like 2000. What was we at? We was in Adam Wood. This, this was like, da, 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 da. this was about 2002. You know what I mean? When this happened, you know? So my man comes back in the joint after he just did all that time. You know what I mean? Old head. He come back in and he's telling me, he's like, yo, you need, it's crazy out there, man. He said, young boy's out there crazy. Young boy told me straight up, you know what I mean? I better have my gun with me next time he see me. So I'm thinking he want beef. You understand? He said, so I go get my joint. I go to the club. I got the chick with me. I leave the club. The police pulled me over, said they got a call that I had a gun and I was threatening somebody's life. The dude called the police on me to tell the police that I had this gun, man. You know what I mean? So I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, nigga told me I better have my gun on me next time. So I go get my gun to defend my life. And he calls the police, tell the police I got the gun. You know? So I had to plead give to the 15 years. So here it is now. He's doing 42 years out of his life from running the street. So I asked him, I said, big bro, you know? This is when I started to wake up. He said, I need to get my stuff together because I see the streets is changing. I said, big bro, if you had to do it all over again, you know what I mean? Would you do it? And he said, nah, he said, hell no, you need, I see the streets out there changing, my nigga. He said, uh, everybody tell me how official this dude is. And, you know, I'm thinking, you know, like the old school, you want your money, you go do what you got to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? If a nigga don't like it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Now, you know, we just go toe to toe. So I'm thinking the dude giving me a fair one, telling me to go get my joint. Because he said, next time I see him, he better have my joint. But instead, he calls the police on me. I had to plead guilty to 15 years to cut this girl loose. I couldn't even fight it at trial or, or on illegal search and seizure. Because if I would have did that, they would have bought her in. If I would have blew, she would have blew. Because they was charging both of us with the gun. But that's how men do. See, she didn't know nothing. And even because she's a female. She didn't know nothing about the gun in the car. So therefore, he got to claim that. She didn't know nothing about him having a beef and needed a gun or had a gun. So he got to claim that. But now if that was a homie and a homie tell him, yo, you know, I got beef with a little nigga and a little nigga told me next time I see me, I got to get, I gotta have my gun. So I got my gun with me. You got yours? And he said, nah, man, you know, I don't really mess with, you know, with the pistols no more because I'm not trying to do no time. And he said, okay, but well, I'm telling you, I got mine, you know? And even we're going far and say, you know, and if the police pull us over, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting it out. You know what I mean? Gunshots, you know? Or, you know, I'm taking it to trial. You know? So it's up to you if you want to ride or not. Man, I'm only going up the street. Come on with me. You know, they're like, just drop me off. So now they ride and they get pulled over. Now they get pulled over and he got this gun in the car. And dude telling them, man, that's your gun. I know you're going to claim it. And he tell them, didn't I tell you that? You know, I wasn't claiming. I was shooting. Now, you're lucky I didn't jump out and start busting at the police. It's just because I knew you was in here and, and you were nine to fiver. But you knew my scenario, and you said you wanted to enter into the arena with me. So that's why I say, youngins, don't get involved with people that's into the street and doing things that you know is against your morals and your principles and what your freedom is worth to you. Don't say I didn't tell you. You can't get better jewels than this, man. This is how we do it over at Unique Mecca Audio, man. You know what I mean? So don't get it twisted. So now I'm going to keep it going. But I'm going to let you know like this. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe, man. And, and, and you already know Cash App is on the screen.
You know, cash app on the screen, hit the like, hit the subscribe, or at least put up an emoji, show me that you represent in this game. The game is to be sold, not told. You know, I, like I said, I talked to another one of the homies yesterday. You know what I mean? When I say homies, I'm talking about my subscribers. Y'all my homies. My number is on the screen. Flash all the time. So you see the number, I answer the number. When you call this number, remember my time is valuable. Don't call my number if you ain't trying to use the cash app on the screen. You know what I mean? Bottom line. You know what I mean? Because the same way y'all don't just answer for randoms, I answer when you shooting the nigga cash app because the game is to be sold, not told, and I'm going to give you the jewels. But this is a couple of the scenarios that a couple of brothers donated to the movement to get answers to. And that's when they said, man, you, you need to make a show about this. You know what I mean? Because this is serious. I said, yeah, it is real serious. Don't get in nobody's car that you know is active without asking them, you dirty. You know what I mean? Because if something happened, then you got to, you rolling with them. You chose to roll with them. You understand what I'm saying? Am I right or wrong, y'all? Huh? Am I right or wrong? Talk to me. All right? Hey, right? Now, follow my man. You know what I mean? Leonardo DiCasio. If you don't know how to spell his name, because I know it's a mouthful, my man official, you go and just text in the phone, freejimmyfingers.com. Freejimmyfingers.com. And text that to a friend, to text to a friend, to text to a friend. My man, picture gonna come up, the bio gonna come up. We hooked him up, you know what I mean? To get him a chain doc all joint. He been in since he was 22, you know. He get ready to turn 50, you know. And, uh, you know, he got three, uh, three life sentence, uh, six life sentence in 300 years. But remember what I told you. You have the choice of who you hang with and who you deal with. So don't hang with dudes that's active and then say, I'm a civilian, I need you to spring me. No, you knew I was active when you got in the car with me, when you whatever with me. So therefore, whatever happens, that means that you dealing with these active repercussions. You follow what I'm saying? Hit the like button, man. And make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. Oh, and I'm getting ready to put up some new videos for the members. You know what I mean? I'm getting ready to put up some new video for the members, so make sure you join your membership. I'm going to start doing some exclusive for the members. And thank you for all the members. All right? Cheers. 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 Ken of 26, he back on the strip, getting back in the mix, what he mentions is a gift, you stand up ten toes down and I suggest you pay attention to this, take a little gully posse and put it in all, he cut from the bottom, came up from the bottom, drop the book, you should go and get it, the Instagram page and the YouTube, you could go and visit, then you could consider yourself LinkedIn, sit front row and get juice from a kingpin, I went through it so you ain't gotta go do it, did not pay attention what was stupid, talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make an audio Get it live like two G's in the night. Drop top beamer so shiny. I let shorty go, she was whining. Treat her like my past, she behind. Spin a couple bands on the dapper dead. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, this a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive, you we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. So take heed, homie, lend it air. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying 
cause it's my buying property to make the community y'all so we can give back to the youth them, cause they the truth them, and bless up to all the rudiments.